Grant Shapps abandoned Ukraine trip over security threat, mod. Grant Shapps, the UK Defence Secretary, cancelled a trip to southern Ukraine to Odessa due to security concerns. UK intelligence reportedly warned that Russia had become aware of his travel plans. The cancellation came a day after a missile hit Odessa, killing five people while the Ukrainian president and Greek prime minister were visiting. Shaps had traveled to Ukraine by overnight train from Poland with Admiral Sir Tony Radikin and British officials to meet Ukrainian leaders. However, the trip to Odessa was abruptly cancelled after intelligence updates revealed the Kremlin's knowledge of it, with the strike in Odessa raising safety concerns to a critical level. Shaps criticized Putin's recklessness and questioned why such actions are allowed. The Ministry of Defense emphasized continued strong support for Ukraine despite the cancellation. Additionally, it was revealed that an RAF plane carrying Shaps had its GPS signal jammed while flying close to Russian territory. Russia will be asked for ceasefire during Olympics, Macron tells Ukraine interviewer. French President Emmanuel Macron stated in an interview that Russia will be asked to observe a ceasefire in Ukraine during the Paris Olympics. Macron emphasized the tradition of requesting a ceasefire during such international events and expressed support for the Olympic truce, promoting peace through sports. The International Olympic Committee had condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, breaching the Olympic truce. Despite IOC restrictions on Russian athletes, the Russian Olympic Committee announced they wouldn't boycott the Paris Olympics. Paris Mayor and Hidalgo expressed preference for Russians and Belarusians not to attend the Games due to the invasion and use of Belarus as a staging ground. Ukraine drones attack refinery, target Moscow, disrupt power, Russia says. On the final day of Ukraine's presidential vote, Russia reported that Ukraine launched 35 drones targeting broad areas of Russia, resulting in a brief fire at an oil refinery and disruptions to electricity in border areas. Moscow accused Kiev of election sabotage through these strikes, describing them as one of the most extensive air operations on Russian territory since Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Although President Zelensky thanked Ukrainian military forces for new, long-range capabilities, he did not mention the reported attacks. Russian sources claimed to have destroyed 17 drones over Krasnodar and others in different regions. With one causing a fire at the Slavyansk refinery. While the fire was extinguished with no casualties reported, there were unconfirmed reports of a heart attack related death. Ukrainian intelligence sources considered the raid successful due to the fire near the targeted crude distillation units. Additionally, drones shot down near Moscow and in the Yaroslavl region caused no casualties or damage, according to local officials. In the border region of Belgorod, Ukraine launched drones damaged electricity and gas lines, while Russian forces intercepted rockets from Ukraine aimed at the Belgorod region. Meanwhile, Kiev's military reported Russian air attacks damaging agricultural enterprises and destroying industrial buildings in Odessa. Putin is poised to rule Russia for six more years after an election with no other real choices. Russian President Vladimir Putin is expected to secure another six-year term, extending his nearly quarter-century rule, in an election where genuine alternatives to his leadership were absent. The tightly controlled three-day election saw no public criticism allowed of Putin or his actions, including the war in Ukraine. Opposition leader Alexei Navalny's death in custody last month and the imprisonment or exile of other critics further solidified Putin's dominance. Navalny's associates urged protest through voter turnout, with reports of people crowding near polling stations as part of the strategy. Despite token rivals, Putin faced no substantial criticism, with his wartime leadership highlighted amidst challenges such as a Ukrainian drone attack. Russian defense industry resilience and a seemingly strong economy contributed to Putin's continued support. While some voters expressed contentment with the status quo, others hoped for change with little optimism. Reports of vandalism at polling stations emerged, along with allegations of ballot tampering. Putin framed the election within the context of the conflict in Ukraine, portraying it as a struggle against Western interference. Western leaders condemned the election as undemocratic, citing limited options for voters and restricted monitoring. Independent observation was severely limited, with only Kremlin-approved candidates and bodies allowed to assign observers, diminishing the potential for oversight. Israel strikes several sites in Syria, wounding a soldier, Syrian military says. Israeli airstrikes targeted several sites in southern Syria early Sunday, causing material losses and injuring a soldier, according to Syrian state media. 
The strikes originated from the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights, with some missiles intercepted by Syrian air defenses. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported additional strikes hitting military sites in the Kalamoun Mountains, an area associated with Hezbollah operations. These airstrikes mark the 24th time Israel has struck inside Syria in 2024, resulting in the deaths of 43 fighters and 9 civilians. Israel often conducts strikes on Iran-linked targets in Syria without official acknowledgement. With recent escalation coinciding with tensions in Gaza and clashes between Hezbollah and Israeli forces on the Lebanon-Israel border. The Israeli army stated its commitment to preventing Hezbollah's entrenchment on the Syrian front, having conducted thousands of strikes against Hezbollah targets in Lebanon and Syria in recent months. Thousands demonstrate in Israel for the release of hostages. Thousands of demonstrators in Tel Aviv and other Israeli cities rallied for the release of hostages held by Hamas and against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government. Relatives of hostages demanded action from the government, accusing it of neglect. Concurrently, protests against Netanyahu's administration called for early elections. Demonstrations turned chaotic in some areas, with clashes between police and protesters. The protests come amid ongoing tensions following a hostage crisis triggered by Hamas and other extremist Palestinian groups. In the West Bank, Israeli soldiers reportedly killed an armed Palestinian near Hebron. With tensions escalating on multiple fronts. Meanwhile, Germany initiated aid drops to Gaza, delivering food supplies in collaboration with the United States and France. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz called for a swift ceasefire in the Gaza conflict ahead of a visit to Jordan and Israel. EU to bolster Egypt ties with billions of euros in funding. European leaders are set to announce a 7.4 billion euro funding package and an upgraded relationship with Egypt in Cairo, aimed at curbing migrant flows across the Mediterranean. The agreement elevates the EU's relationship with Egypt to a strategic partnership and aims to enhance cooperation in areas like renewable energy, trade, and security while providing financial support to Egypt's economy. The funding includes 5 billion euros in macrofinancial assistance, 1.8 billion euros of investments, and 600 million euros in grants, with a significant portion allocated for emergency funding. This initiative comes amidst concerns about Egypt's economic stability and increasing migration trends. The strategic importance of Egypt has been underscored by regional conflicts, including the crisis in Sudan and the conflict in Gaza. Critics have raised concerns about human rights abuses in Egypt, with rights groups criticizing Western support for President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi's regime. Additionally, activists have voiced skepticism about the effectiveness of EU deals aimed at curbing migration in exchange for financial assistance. Scholz to meet Netanyahu on second visit to Israel since start of war. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is set to meet Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Tel Aviv during his second visit to Israel since the start of the Gaza war over five months ago. The focus of the meeting is expected to be Israeli preparations for a potential ground offensive in Rafah, Gaza, against which Scholz plans to issue an urgent warning, calling for a ceasefire to facilitate the release of hostages and provide humanitarian aid to the suffering population in the Palestinian territory. While Germany supports Israel's military operation against Hamas, it has criticized the conduct of the war, particularly concerning civilian casualties. Scholz's itinerary includes meetings with Jordanian King Abdullah in Aqaba before heading to Israel to meet with President Isaac Herzog, War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz, and relatives of hostages alongside Netanyahu. Niger ends military agreement with U.S., calls it profoundly unfair. Niger's military government has terminated an agreement with the United States allowing U.S. military personnel and civilian staff from the Department of Defense to operate in Niger. The decision follows high-level talks between Nigerian and U.S. officials and reflects the junta's assertion of sovereignty since assuming power in July 2023, labeled a coup by the U.S. The agreement, signed in 2012, was deemed unfair and against Niger's democratic principles. Relations between Niger and the U.S. have deteriorated since the coup, leading to the withdrawal of many U.S. troops stationed in Niger. The Pentagon views a presence in Niger as crucial for counterterrorism efforts in the region. The announcement coincided with a visit by a U.S. delegation, which Nigerian officials criticized for lacking diplomatic courtesy and attempting to limit Niger's choice of partners. Niger rejected allegations of secret deals with Russia and Iran, denouncing what it perceived as a condescending attitude from the U.S. Taiwan warns Chinese ships to turn around immediately. 
Taiwan issued warnings to Chinese Coast Guard ships for entering restricted waters near its frontline Kinmen Islands for the second consecutive day. Four Chinese Coast Guard boats were reported to have entered the area, prompting Taiwan to demand their immediate departure. The incident underscores ongoing tensions between Taiwan and China, with China claiming Taiwan as its own territory despite Taiwan's objections. China's increased military activities near Taiwan, including frequent incursions into Taiwan's air defense identification zones, have raised concerns. Last month, China began regular patrols near Kinmen following a maritime incident involving Chinese nationals. Despite cooperating on rescue missions, Taiwan criticizes China's harassment while simultaneously seeking Taipei's assistance in maritime incidents, creating confusion. Taiwan emphasizes maintaining the status quo near Kinmen and urges China to refrain from provocative actions in the area. Blinken arrives in South Korea to attend Democracy Summit. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in South Korea on the first leg of a brief Asia tour, also including the Philippines, to reinforce ties with key regional allies. Blinken's visit coincides with the third summit for democracy, hosted by Seoul, bringing together government officials, NGOs, and civil society members. South Korea, a key U.S. ally, hosts around 27,000 American soldiers to counter the threat from North Korea. Blinken's discussions in Seoul will focus on bolstering the alliance and enhancing extended deterrence against North Korea. The Democracy Summit has faced criticism for its selective invitation list, excluding some democratic nations. After South Korea, Blinken will visit Manila to reaffirm the U.S. commitment to its alliance with the Philippines, particularly amid tensions with China over the South China Sea. China has accused the U.S. of using the Philippines as a pawn in the South China Sea dispute, where Beijing's claims clash with those of Southeast Asian nations. The South China Sea is strategically important for its role in trade and China's naval expansion aims to assert its power in the region. Supreme Court to decide if White House went too far fighting social media misinformation. The Supreme Court is considering a case involving government interaction with social media platforms, sparked by claims of censorship from conservatives. This case follows concerns over social media's role in disseminating misinformation on topics like the 2020 election and COVID-19. The lawsuit challenges government officials' pressure on platforms to remove or downrank content, raising questions about free speech and government influence. Critics argue that government intervention threatens free expression, while supporters assert the need to combat harmful misinformation. The outcome of this case could have significant implications for online speech and government regulation of social media platforms. AOC district neighborhood labeled Third World as migrants clog streets and prostitutes overrun every block. An area in squad member Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez district, specifically Corona, Jackson Heights, and Elmhurst in Queens, New York, is described as resembling a third world country due to the presence of desperate migrants selling goods on sidewalks and prostitutes soliciting sex openly. The neighborhood has reportedly deteriorated into a large flea market with unsanitary conditions, overflowing trash, and illegal street vendors. Residents express concerns about the decline in public safety and quality of life, with crime increasing in the area. Despite efforts by law enforcement to crack down on prostitution, the issue persists, leading to calls for radical change and a Republican approach to address the situation. Residents, including Ramses Frias, are running for political office to combat these issues and restore the neighborhood's vibrancy while maintaining a pro-immigrant stance. However, some elected officials, such as Council Member Catalina Cruz, are advocating for alternative solutions to address quality of life concerns in the community.